Hello there, welcome to the June 2019 applied paper. Here we're looking at question two. The partially completed box plots in figure one show the distribution of daily mean air temperatures using the data from the large data set for Beijing in 2015. An outlier is defined as a value less than 1.5 times the interquartile range below uh, Q1 or more than 1.5 times the interquartile range above Q3. The three lowest temperatures in the data set are 7.6, 8.1 and 9.1. The highest air temperature in the data set is 32.5. Complete the blocks plot in figure one showing, your clear, showing clearly any outliers. So what we have to do first is we have to work out the interquartile range and work out where, our, where the points are that we're going to stop our outliers. So the interquartile range, it goes from 19.4 up to 26.6 so the interquartile range is 26.6 minus 19.4 and if we do that on the calculator we get 7.2 now we have to work out 1.5 times the interquartile range 1.5 times interquartile range and that's going to give us 1.5 times 7.2, 10.8. So effectively, the lower bound is going to be 19.4 uh, minus 10.8. That's the lower bound for the outliers. So 19.4 minus 10.8, that gives us 8.6. So 8.6 is the cutoff point for outliers, so it's going to be 7.6 down here. That's going to be marked with a cross. So that point there is at 7.6. The next point is going to be at 8.1. And now that given that the next point is 9.1, but that's now not considered to be an outlier, that's where we're going to start our... Um, kind of whisker mark and then draw it to connect it to the box. So the next point is going to be um, 32.5. Let's see if that is inside the outlier range. So the upper bound is going to be 26.6 add 10.8. 26.6 add 10.8. That gives us 37.4. 32.5 is well within the range of values for the outliers, so it's going to be up to 32.5. That's the highest uh, value there. So there we are, that's the answer for question A. Moving on to part B, use your knowledge of the large data set to suggest which month of the two outliers are likely to have, are likely to have come, the two outliers are likely to have come. Um, so we, we've got to remember what months in the data set um, we have for Beijing. And we have the data set from May to October. So which month is likely to be coldest in October? Because Beijing is generally a quite warm country. I think it would probably be likely to be October. Because October is likely to be the coolest month. October is likely to be the coolest month. Okay, so there we are, that's the answer for part B. Okay, so moving on to part C and D. Using the, la using the data from the large data set, Simon produced the following summary statistics for daily mean air temperature, X degrees Celsius, for Beijing in 2015. N is equal to 184, the sum of X is equal to 4153.6, and SXX is equal to 4952.906. Show that to three significant figures, the standard deviation is 5.19. Well, probably what you're thinking is, what is SXX? Well, if you go to your formula booklet, it will give you a bit of a clue as to what that is. If I grab the snippet from the formula booklet, it tells you that this is the value of SXX. It's effectively the sum of the differences between each data value and the mean. So, 
what this tells us as well is that we can work out the standard deviation by doing the square root of SXX over N. So let's do that in our calculation then. So it's going to be standard deviation equals the square root of SXX over N. So that's going to be the square root of 4952.906 divided by 184. If we do that in the calculator, let's just grab our calculator, square root button, fraction button, 4952.906, divided by 184. That gives us 5.188, 5 which is equal to 5.19 to two decimal places. Okay, so there we are, that's our answer for part C. So moving on to part D now, Simon decides to model the air temperatures with the random variable T is normally distributed with a mean of 22.6 and a standard deviation of 5.19. Using Simon's model, calculates the 10th to the 90th interpercentile range. So what that effectively means is if we draw our normal distribution like that, and we have the mean at 22.6, we want to work out the range of the interpercentile range where we have 0.1 on each side, 0.1, 0.1, because this will be the 90, 90th percent, so 0.9% there. So we want to work out the range in between these two values here and here. So we need to work out what this is, we need to work out what this is, and then the difference between the two. So let's go to grab our calculator then. So we go to the normal distribution mode and we'll work out what this value here is first. We need to work out the point at which we have um, 0.1 probability to the left when our mean is 22.6 and our standard deviation is 5.19. The correct mode we need on, for this on the calculator is going to the menu and hitting mode 7. In this mode, we want to hit the inverse normal mode. So mode number three in your calculator. This will tell us a point, um, this will tell us a temperature value such that the probability of the temperature being less than that temperature value is 0.1. Let me show you how we use mode three. So select mode three and we want an area to the left of 0.1 when the standard deviation is 5.19 and the mean is 22.6. So type that in and you get an answer of 15.94, uh, 94, what was call it, 95. Okay, now what would be helpful is if we stored this in our calculator as the value A, so hit the STO button and then the red A above it. You don't need to press alpha for that, that move there, just STO and then the red A. Now we need to work out the other value here, and then we'll do the difference between the two of them to work out the interpercentile range. So we've worked out the 10th percentile value. Now let's go ahead and work out the 90th percentile value. Same variables as before, but now we want a probability of 0.9 to the left. It's always the probability to the left. So let's enter that in the calculator, and it's going to be 29.25. And now to work out the interpercentile range, we're going to be doing 29.25. Make sure you write some of this down, minus 15.95. And that's going to give us an answer of, we'll store that to calculator uh, variable B, and then we'll go back to the main mode on our calculator, menu mode one, and then we'll calculate B minus A, and that will give us the most accurate answer we can possibly find on our calculator, 13.3 to three significant figures. So there we are, that's the answer to part D. And moving on to the next part now. Question E says, Simon wants to model another variable from the large data set for Beijing using a normal distribution. State two variables from the large data set for Beijing that are not suitable to be modeled by a normal distribution. Give a reason for each answer. So let's uh, see what the mark scheme says. So just remember that Beijing has a reduced amount of variables on the large data set. It doesn't have all of those same variables that the, the UK towns and cities do. So we have to bear in mind that Beijing has a smaller amount of variables and remember what those variables are. 
uh, daily wind speed on the Beaufort scale, so that's the light, calm, calm to light, etc., etc. Um, we wouldn't be able to do the normal distribution with that because it's not uh, it's not quantitative data; it's qualitative data. And rainfall would be a silly one to use because that would not be normally distributed because it's um, heavily um, heavily skewed to the left where there is little rainfall and not and there's not very many values on the right hand side um, where there's lots of rainfall. So because that's skewed data and we want the normal distribution to be symmetric data. So that's the two reasons for those two different variables there. And there we are, that's our answer for question two in total. That's 11 marks. Let's now move on to question three.